Howdy all, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some cards and more specifically our SD cards where we're gonna be storing all the memory from our photographs. So as you may or may not know, but probably most of you do, a good camera and to take good quality photographs is gonna require a good SD card. And there are lots of SD cards with different numbers, lettering and symbols. So let's cover that, see what they mean, and then you'll find out what works best for you and your needs. We'll start with the simplest two that are very closely related. And I'm talking about capacity and card type. Now capacity, very obvious. It's the big number in the middle of the card that tells you how much space is actually on the card. And then there's the card type. And this card is gonna have these four letters, SDXC. Now SD cards have been around for a long time and they've gone through some changes throughout that time. And the card type tells us what kind of file writing method the card uses as well as its maximum capacity. Now there are four types. SD, which means secure digital, is gonna be your oldest type of card. These cards usually have a maximum capacity of two gigabytes. Then there's SDHC, secure digital high capacity. It's a slightly newer card and the capacity is no more than 32 gigs. Now the third type of card is gonna be your SDXC, secure digital extended capacity, which can theoretically hold up to almost two terabytes. And the last one is gonna be our SDUC, which is secure digital ultra capacity. And these can hold up to almost 128 terabytes. Now, you're probably not gonna be able to find cards that big, but if you do happen to find them, they'll probably cost a ridiculous amount of money. So why is card type important for us? Well, if your camera comes from the period of SDHC, it means that using a newer SDXC, for example, card type, it's not gonna work with your camera. So it's really important to know what type of camera you have, what period it's from, and so that we can effectively grab the correct card that fits and suits your camera. From a certain point, megabytes per second started to appear on cards. But be careful, if you're looking for a card with a specific writing speed, this number indicates the read speed. The only exception is Sony cards, which have numbers listed indicating both the W, which is our write speed, and the letter R, which is our read speed. Now you can determine write speed using the following information. There are numbers inside these letters. They tell us the speed class of the card and as a result, the minimum write speed. These letters are C and U. C class has been used since the beginning of SD cards. The number inside the C indicates the number of megabytes that the card can write per second. For example, C4 is four megabytes per second. For C6, it's gonna be six megabytes. And for C10, 10 megabytes per second. But be careful as this number is only gonna represent the guaranteed minimum write speed. And in most cases, the write speed is gonna be a bit higher than that. As time went on, images got bigger and bigger and needed to be written on the card faster. So they came up with the UHS standard, which raised the maximum possible write speed to UHS or ultra high speed. Now UHS gives us the same information as class, just on a different scale. There are only two types on the market, U1 and U3 where one equals 10 megabytes per second and three equals 30 megabytes per second. Wait a second, so you're telling me UHS-1 has the same writing speed as a class 10? What's the difference? Cards without UHS have a maximum write speed of around 25 megabytes per second, which isn't really very much, and especially when it comes to video, where we'll get to that in a moment. But this is why the vast majority of cards you can buy have a C10 rating, which is the highest in its class. Now UHS also has two generations, which are denoted by these Roman numerals. The first writes at a maximum speed of 104 megabytes per second, and the second writes at 312 megabytes per second. UHS 2 even has a second row of pins on the back to help with faster transfer speeds. The last piece of information on the card is a V with a number after it. This is a class designation for video which started to be added to cards relatively recently. Again, it indicates the minimum write speed and helps determine what video resolution the card is suitable for. V30 can handle 30 megabytes per second, making it perfect for full high definition. Now V60 can handle 60 megabytes per second, which makes it suitable for 4K. 
and V90 can handle 90 megabytes per second, making it suitable for 8K. Now this isn't always accurate though, because write speed requirements can vary depending on the video's frame rate and bitrate. So that is what all those numbers on the SD cards mean. And here's a few more tips before we wrap things up. Now it doesn't pay to go cheap on SD cards, and that's for two reasons. Firstly, no one wants to lose the image data they have on their cards, and that will happen sooner or later if you purchase unreliable cards. And the second reason, unless you destroy or lose it, the card can be used for other cameras. And that's why we recommend getting the best SD card your current camera can handle. Now here's a little bit of a warning and a tip. Be wary of SanDisk cards. I've had to throw away a few of them because their casing isn't exactly the strongest, and this has been a repeated issue from them. The casing tends to crack either on the front or at the top of the seam, or the plastic partitions between the pins on the back break off and the cards can't be read by the camera or the reader. Getting image data off of a broken card is gonna require surgery on another card. You have to remove the chip and insert it into another card, which you have to disassemble. So if your card is frequently going from camera to card reader and then back again, look at cards from other brands like Kingston or Lexar. I find the most durable cards to be Sony. And a fun fact for you, did you know that newer SD cards actually take up less than a third of the space of the casing? So that's it for SD cards. I hope that information was useful for you. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you think below. Make sure you subscribe so that you never miss another video from us. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, you guys take care, take lots of photographs, test out various cards and see what you can do with them. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Ciao.